Hello everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to be talking about step three on my intro to speaker building series. Today's topic, how to choose your drivers. Selecting the drivers you'll be using to build your speakers is a pretty big step, and to get it right, it's all about the research. I'll be telling you the steps that I use when deciding on drivers, but just like everything else in speaker building, there's plenty of ways to go about it. So I encourage you to go out and do your own research after watching this video to round out your knowledge. All right, let's just dive right into it. Step number one, speaker application and goals. So the first thing I need to do, which I may have already done before getting to this step, is decide what overall type of speaker I want to build and in what application do I want to apply the speaker towards. Am I building small speakers for a computer desk application or am I building really big speakers for great music listening? Uh, is my number one priority sound quality or is my number one priority to stay within my budget? Determining your goals for your speakers now is important because it's going to dictate how you proceed with the next steps. Step number two, enclosure and speaker size. The next thing you want to lock in is your enclosure size. Now, this is something you might have already decided on or you've been considering, but right now it's time to make a decision. The enclosure size of your speakers will dictate the size of driver you'll be able to fit within your project. If you've decided you're gonna make small computer speakers, you won't have to waste time researching big 10 inch woofers uh, because they won't fit your project. And vice versa, if you're gonna be making big tower speakers, you don't wanna be wasting your time looking at small little drivers. Step three, crossover type. You already decided what type of crossover you'll be using for your project in our last video. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right up here. Um, the type of crossover you chose will determine how many speakers you'll need for your project. If you chose a two-way crossover, you'll need two speakers. If you chose a three-way crossover, you'll need three speakers, and so on. Um, normally, you would consider a tweeter for the high portion of the frequency spectrum. You'd use a midwoofer for the mids to lows, and you'd use a sub for the lows. Step four, budget. Considering your budget could have been put as the first step, um, but I think it's kind of important to dream a little bit before your wallet slaps you back to reality. Speakers can be very expensive and your driver selection is where a large portion of your budget will end up. Uh, so it's important to keep in mind the first step in this series of steps. What are you using your speakers for and what are your goals? If your goals are to have the best speaker sound possible, maybe you wanna check out the high-end expensive drivers. Um, if you're building speakers for casual listening, maybe you wanna focus a little more on the budget side. Now, this doesn't mean you can't get good or great sound on a budget. Uh, I would suggest looking into Tang Band speakers or Dayton Audio speakers. Um, they're really good quality, good sounding drivers that won't cost you an arm and a leg. I built my ceramic speakers using Tang Band drivers, and it wasn't an overly expensive project. Um, and, and the results, they actually it turned out really good. They, they sounded great. You can actually listen to them. I did a sound test video. You can check that out right up here um, and see what they sound like. Step five, frequency range. Now is when we get into some real meat. Uh, it's important that your drivers work well together. And by that, I mean, there shouldn't be any gaps or dips in the audio spectrum in between your drivers. We'll know this by taking a look at the driver's data sheets and comparing the frequency response graphs. Basically, we just wanna make sure that the top end frequency range of our mid driver extends beyond the bottom end of the frequency range of our tweeter. Step six, sensitivity match. Once you know your drivers will cover what you expect of the audio spectrum, you want to make sure that each of your drivers will produce sound at the same volume. Um, if your tweeter is much louder than everything else in your system, it won't sound as good as it could. Remember, your goal is a flat frequency response across the entire spectrum. So how we determine your driver's bass volume is by comparing its sensitivity. Now this information should be available to you through the data sheet. It'll be listed as a DB level uh, under SPL. All of your drivers don't have to have the exact same SPL, but the closer you get to that, the better. 
Um, although some people do prefer to have their woofers to be three to four dB more sensitive than their tweeters. Um, but I would suggest doing a little more research on that and making sure that's what you want to do. Number seven, looks. Obviously, as you all probably know by now, I care about how my speakers look. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to care about how your speakers look, but if you're not going to be using a grill uh, to cover your drivers, you might as well, you know, pick some nice looking ones. Because, um, dang, there's definitely some good looking ones out there. And there's some not so good looking ones. So that's it. That's not too bad, right? You should definitely consider these much more like guidelines rather than steps. Um, just because you finish one doesn't mean you're not going to go back to the next one when the next step doesn't work out. Um, and you should actually be going through all these steps or guidelines uh, all the time with multiple drivers. Um, this is going to do two things. First thing it's going to do is going to teach you much more about the vast variety of drivers that are out there on the market. Um, it'll also make sure that you get the perfect drivers for your project. I put links in the description to some of the places that I buy my speakers from. Um, I also put links to some of the drivers that I really like to use. Um, also, if you go to some of my build videos in those descriptions, I have a list of everything that I use to put that speaker together, including the drivers. So check those out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I don't know why I always do that.